When we think about dating games, horrific images of anthropomorphic animals, weird fetishes, and straight up incomprehensible romance options come to mind. Especially when dating games are made for women, a lot of people just deem the whole genre as trash and call them femcel games. But are dating simulators really just a sick escapist fantasy for parasocial teenage girls? Or can they provide a valuable and feminist alternative to the more and more depressing reality of dating? Let's unpack the weird world of dating games and let's start from the very beginning. What the f is a dating game? The definition of dating games is not straightforward at all. There are dating games and there are visual novels, and the lines between the two can often be blurred. Visual novels are games with very minimal gameplay, in which most interactions are limited to clicking the text options. This way, players make narrative choices along the way, with almost each choice influencing the ending or development of the story itself. Dating games, on the other hand, largely depend on statistics. That means in order to be able to date and develop your relationship with the characters, players need to cultivate specific skills. And then there are otome, also known as otoge, short of otome gemu, which is Japanese for maiden games, sit at the crossroad between visual novels and actual dating games. Because of their emphasis on narration and relatively minimal gameplay, some people define them as visual novels with dating sims elements. But what's really different from other dating games is that otome involve a female main character dating several male non-playable characters, which means mostly they are targeting women. Like me! And because your choices strongly influence the outcome of the story, otome games can be replayed many times. Each replay or route can lead to different endings, good or bad, depending on which male character or love interest players choose to pursue. As niche as all of this may sound, otome games are becoming more and more popular in Western and Asian countries. In China, for example, fashion magazines have started featuring popular otome characters on their covers, and brands hire them for fashion collabs. But in China, dating otome characters in real life is also an option, with some cosplayers offering a paper date service. A Chinese otome fan even spent $39,000 on an LED billboard ad in the city of Shenzhen to wish a happy birthday to one of the characters of China's most popular otome games. In Western countries, more otome games are localized than ever before, but many fans still complain about not enough games being available in English. So how did otome games become so popular and should we worry about it? Both dating sims and visual novels originated in Japan, and so did Atome. Tokimeki Memorial is considered the first and most influential dating game of the time, and it shaped the whole genre, but some think it actually had a huge impact on gaming as a whole. The female-oriented version of Tokimeki Memorial was released in 2002 and was a smash hit. However, the very first Otome was this one. The main character, Angelique, is a blonde teenage girl who is set to become the next queen of the universe and is therefore responsible for nine male guardians. And surprise, surprise, romantically pursuing these guardians ends up being the main purpose of the story. Angelique kickstarted a whole series that continues to this day, with the latest title being released for Nintendo Switch in 2021. The 90s also saw the emergence of some female-oriented dating games in the US. What's really different compared to Japanese ones is that for these games like Girls Club and Mackenzie & Co, real actors were casted to play both the girl and also the romanceable male characters in the game. Wouldn't you want to date him? However, the genre didn't develop as much in Western countries as it did in Japan and later in China and Korea. Some Otome games got a lot of buzz online and enjoyed some mainstream success in Western countries, like the weird one where you can bait a pigeon or the Korean Mystic Messenger in 2016. And that was mostly because of their quirkiness and original features. What's interesting is that the people making Angelique and many of the most iconic Otome in the 90s were Ruby Party, which was the female division of one of the best gaming companies of all time, Koei. Ruby Party was created by Keiko Arakawa, now co-CEO of the whole company. Arakawa was wildly ahead of her time and a real pioneer of all women in the gaming industry. The developer turned co-CEO said in many interviews that she created Ruby Party to face the issue of being the only woman in the predominantly male team. 
but also to make video games for women. A chunk of the market nobody was really paying attention to at the time. Up to this day, many Atome are developed by female-led developing teams, like Sharitz from Korea, which is an all-female gaming company whose slogan is making games for women's happiness. But not unlike 90s Japan, female dev teams in the gaming world are rare to say the least. Women being in charge is perhaps the main reason behind the popularity of Atome games with female audiences. But female-led narratives are also what makes this genre so controversial. Atome games are criticized for a bunch of different reasons. Gamers make fun of their non-existent gameplay, while others criticize the storylines for being toxic and promoting a skewed image of dating and romance. The majority of Atome tropes and archetypes are pretty innocent and shared with with many other East Asian cultural products like anime, K-drama, and C-drama. Just think of the powerful CEO or the childhood friend. At the same time, some other love interest archetypes are objectively programmatic, like the Orisama. Orisama types can appear charming, but these characters are narcissistic and overconfident. They have a god complex and not really famous for treating the main character with respect. And then the most controversial of all, the young did it. Lovesick, dangerously obsessive, display stalkerish behaviors prone to jealousy, and sometimes can resort to violence in order to protect the main character, the player. Because of how common these characters are, criticism of creating toxic narratives is valid to some extent. After all, Atome players are young and have limited experience of romance and sex in real life. But not all Atome fans are preteens. Older players in their late 20s often play Otome games not because they don't know any better, but because they represent a valuable alternative to the blunt reality of dating in real life. In East Asian societies like China and Japan, gender inequalities are still plaguing millions of women. Domestic violence is commonplace, and even in younger generations, the gap between men and women when it comes to embracing feminist values and equal relationship can be huge. And even outside of East Asia, well... The dating crisis is real. Because of the escapist nature of Atome, Atome fans are sometimes described as weirdos incapable of attracting real men and even men haters. In Japan and China, fans of Atome games and boil of literature and anime have reappropriated this criticism and call themselves Fujoshi or Funyu, which literally means rotten girl. The word is a pun on how mainstream culture and society view and despises them because of their non-conventional way of approaching romantic and sexual desire. The second reason why Atome can be quite controversial is that fake boyfriends often require real money. More and more titles are localized from Japanese, Chinese, and Korean and are now widely available to play for English-speaking players around the world. Otome games have long existed for PC and consoles, but they are now commonly played on mobile. More and more more Otome started being published on mobile between 2011 and 2013, and they assimilated very well into the economy of mobile app stores, adapting to the free-to-play model. This model allows players to download the game for free, but monetizes advertisements and relies on additional in-app purchases. These microtransactions make up for the bulk of revenue for many mobile games, including Otome. And the Game Award goes to, oh man, I have to pay a microtransaction to unlock? That's so... Microtransactions are extremely controversial in the gaming world in general, but they seem to be even sneakier when it comes to Otome games. Differently from other mobile games where you spend real money to buy better weapons or cooler skins, microtransactions in Otome revolve around players' affection or obsession with specific characters. Otome games have been able to monetize that affectionate and sometimes sexual longing for 2D idealized characters by limiting players to a set number of chapters every day or selling additional routes. In some cases, choices leading to happy endings need to be paid for by microtransactions. This is not news at all. From anime and manga to Western IPs, the amount of money fans are willing to spend for the fictional heroes and heroines have always been insane. In East Asian cultures, the magnitude of this phenomenon has been so big, media researchers and journalists now commonly use terms like fan labor and fan economy. And whether you think Atome are a legit and interesting way to explore one's own sexuality, and feelings and unwind after a long day at work. Or you think they are spreading toxic narratives of romance and sex? Well, just remember that they're not real. Like Slavoj Zizek once wrote, we have a perfect name for fantasy realized. It's called a nightmare. 